by the way, can I ask you a question? <laughs> Every time, always, yeah. yes. Uh, what about this uh, Grand Vault Waltz by Sikhra? Is, right. uh, is this piece in the book? By the way, can I ask you a question? Oh. Every time, always, yes. Uh, what about this uh, Grand Vault Waltz by Sikhra? Uh, is right. it... Uh, Okay, I know what happens. You know, it's everything doubling up now on on my this is my computer on YouTube. So uh, th this grand walls, I knew about it all all along. You know, it's from a book of manuscripts that you had. Oh. In your possession, so at some point you may have. I mean that that was the problem. You know, I gave you like a pile of uh, unprocessed music, and it's kind of. You know. Didn't you know didn't uh, get processed and and, yeah. and didn't really but but i have scanned it all i have it all on uh, on i know so you can find this walls yeah i mean uh, this walls is a little mysterious first of all it's an e major yes second of all uh, it doesn't really seem to have any form mm. it's really hard to find a melody or i mean it, it, there's a lot of really i mean it's like exercitsi only only I mean, Sikhra was a very strange musician, like mm -hmm. melodically not gifted, definitely. Mm -hmm. But but he had other talents. All right. Now okay. what I'm saying is heard by the whole world. Let's see what how many people are. Uh, not here. Oh. Hmm. Hi John, hi Jonathan. Welcome to the master class. We are waiting for the teacher.
So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the second day of Yargus 2021. Добро пожаловать во второй день нашего фестиваля Yargus 2021. Мы в ожидании. История поставлена на ожидание. Кнопка ожидать. History is put on hold because we are waiting for the Grand Maestro Marco Erdivichke to teach this class, and so far we are kind of waiting for it to happen. So the moment you see Marco uh, among the participants, kind of signal it to me. In the meantime, we can talk to Ruslan about his about about his life. Uh, in English, let's let's just anybody can ask Ruslan a question in English. Stefan, what do you want to know about Ruslan? Oh, here's Marco. Hey, oh. Ruslan, how long have you been playing the guitar? Uh, I am playing guitar five years. Excellent, Great. that's very good. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Maestro Marco Erdivichki. He's he is here. I'm so here nice. in Norway. <laughs> here in Norway on my desktop. Yes. yes. So nice to see you. Nice so... to see you too. Look uh, how f nice t-shirt I have. That's great. That's the way. And that's a great guitar and great everything. And the picture with the lute is great. So everything fantastic. So should we begin? Uh, Ruslan, what are you going to play for the master? Uh, I want to play uh, uh, Sihra, uh, Pokažiš mesec jasný. Translation. Show yourself clear moon. Well, I mean, I don't really know what the song is about, but I strongly suspect that uh, clear moon is not about the astronomical phenomenon, but it's about a person who is called moon, you know, because a beautiful woman uh, often is compared to the moon, you know, due to the whiteness of her face and blah, blah, blah. Yes. Uh, so you, you have sent me you have sent me two versions of the same piece uh, so i just wonder uh, ruslan what is the the version you are uh, playing from this uh, kind of modern edition or are you playing from those older notes Basically, he's playing from modern edition. I mean, I just know from his teacher, uh, Evgeny, that he, you know, it was difficult. The older notes were difficult for Ruslan to, you know, to, to read. So he made this mm -hmm. new edition, especially for Ruslan. So therefore, there are some discrepancies. Which yes, yes, I have, I have noticed. I have compared them and, uh, and I can see uh, what we are going to work on today. <laughs> All right, Ruslan. <laughs> Be ready. There is a work ahead of us. Играть? Давай.
Wow. This is really, really fantastic. I have listened to you on your concert and you haven't played this piece, but you could have played this piece because it's, it's almost uh, ready for, uh, to play. So you really played brilliantly. Um, uh, Marka, can I just make, make sure, like, mm -hmm. uh, Ruslan, ты точно понимаешь все, что он говорит? Нет? Ну, он говорит, что ты прекрасно сыграл, и что ты мог бы играть и эту пьесу на концерте тоже. Я постараюсь переводить минимум, но если, если, он что -то, если ты что-то не понимаешь, то спрашивай, ладно? Хорошо, спасибо. So, uh, I mean, you, 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 you have played very fast. It went a little bit too fast uh, for me. I couldn't uh, observe uh, everything that I, I was interested in. So Marka I говорит, что он, ты сыграл так быстро, что он не успел, uh, не, не мог даже успевать uh, наблюдать все, что его интересует, все технические детали. Mm. Uh, So if I can ask you to play only the theme, uh, but a little bit slower this time. Понимаешь? только тему и немножко медленнее вот в этот раз. Oleg, I, I can't see him. He is playing, but I can't see him. That is strange. I mean, I can see him. Uh, Ruslan, can you talk something? Can you Say tell something? something? It must be some kind of Zoom issue because I'm only. Let me see. Switch to gallery view. Yeah. I, I can't change. I mean, I can see all the participants now in the gallery view, but. No, Ruslan. Yeah, I can see him among the others, but... Oh, I see. There is, if you go to this, uh, like, many dots, uh, there is pin. And you can pin him. How and can I pin? Well, okay, like, if you go to this little icon in the gallery, there is, there is a, like, there are two little things, like, when, when you put your cursor there, and one of them shows the dots. And but but uh, but I'm the, on my iPad, uh, so I don't have. You don't have a cursor. Mm. I don't know how to pin on iPad. Yeah, there should be a way, I guess. Is but I but but I saw him uh, when when he played when he played the piece for the first time. It 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 fun functioned well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess it, it's automatically okay. Uh, Ruslan, can, uh, you, but can you can you try to mute your microphone, Oleg, when okay. he's playing? All so right. we okay. we try. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, uh, I, I will now su suggest you to just to try some articulations uh, that are written by uh, by Sikra that are a little bit different from uh, this modern edition that you are playing uh, from. I mean, it's it just uh, to, to give it a try. Uh, one of, of, of the things is When you come to C major, uh, uh, you have uh, everything is under the same slur. Uh, it means uh, you are playing, uh, but could you try to do? Uh, Ты понял, да, Руслан? Да, я понял. Нужно задерживать ноту и играть. Что, что, что? Нужно 
задерживать ноты играть. Нет, он говорит о том, чтобы сыграть вот это вот так, где ты пришел на до-мажор, предпоследний такт на этой строчке. Марка предлагает тебе э, сыграть все, все ноты, ям, пара, ра, 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 все под одной лигой. Начиная от соли, кончая ре. And, and I can also suggest here, I mean, it's my, not my discovery, but I am, I suppose that uh, when Sigra puts this kind of decrescendo on very small uh, place, uh, it, it means some kind of accent usually, but technically it can be a kind of Segovia, almost Segovia's effect, where you where you stop the resonance of the of the chord and can can also play a poyando on the on on this highest note so that it sings very uh, very well. Yeah. Uh, so to, to get this high note to 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 come uh, секунду, Марка. Ты, ты понимаешь, да, Руслан, что он хочет? Смотри, он, он предлагает тебе э, сыграть... А ты знаешь, что такое тирандо, паяндо? Да. Значит, он предлагает тебе сыграть аккорд до мажор и сразу его остановить, в смысле, не, чтобы он не гудел. Так, да. И потом сыграть на первой струне паяндо таким образом, что у тебя палец будет уже готов... будет готов уже к, к до на второй струне. А вот, это, а вот эта первая твоя нота, соль, она выйдет такая певучая, красивая. Ямпария. Yeah, I like it. I like it very much The next place is this. Uh, in in this early edition, there is this legato. Uh, so I would prefer that instead of instead to pluck like this. Imagine. So I, I suggest that you do. It's kind of double, double hammer on. То есть это надо сыграть легато на двух струнах одновременно, ну на первой и на четвертой. Можешь такое сделать? Нет, видишь, ты артикулируешь ми. Можешь ми сыграть легато? Так написано у дедушки Сихры. Еще разок. Окей, but only there is slur only between re and me. Re me and fa. You should block again. Yeah, exactly. So uh, that's the way Sikra did it, and uh, it's much more eloquent uh, way of, uh, of of playing um okay could you just continue with variation number one also a little bit slower играй первую вариацию немножко медленнее okay okay Ruslan. Uh, I think it is possible to do everything uh, here in, in, in seventh position. Uh, 
um, I would do, probably do it here because Sikra wants also this C to uh, to to last throughout the whole bar. Uh, so it is nice, and you can technically prepare the bar chord. Also. Very good, very good. You can you can uh, take a look at uh, at the music. Uh, and I think it is good, Ruslan. Can you try to to pre prepare this bar chord before you before you start? Uh, I think it's better than this way. And then you have to put uh, bar chord which is always a kind of stress moment. Руслан, so, Марко предлагает тебе сразу начать с этого маленького баре, чтобы, чтобы не, не нужно было потом ставить. Yes, and I think it is easier to do this uh, legato uh, uh, when you have stability and when you have already the other fingers that have pushed the strings down, you get much lower action. Uh, so it gets much easier for uh, for the fourth finger to do the the hammer on. Марко считает, что так проще будет четко сыграть. Well, you can you can keep you can keep the bar chord. Можешь оставаться на баре. Or you can you can just uh, do it like this from barre to 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 keeping only the, the third string. With, with the first Можешь только просто первый палец оставить на третьей струне без барре уже. And then third finger, третий палец. Then you have третий, первый, другий. Второй. Okay, but I suggest that you look at it with your teacher and you, you try. You try to change the finger is there. Uh, you can just uh, keep on playing the way you did it. Uh, you, you, we, we just go further. Okay, back to the Can you do it from, from here? Okay, very well. So uh, when when you do this crescendo, it is important to start crescendo low in the volume uh, so that you can develop it. So yes. Uh, it is very important uh, when we see crescendo. Uh, somehow we t all tend to play uh, very loudly at, uh, immediately. But you know, uh, cre when you see crescendo, uh, one lamp should blink for like you should play low. So crescendo means first low, especially uh, for us guitarists that don't have so much. Uh, possibility on, uh, on guitar to play like you know on piano. <laughs> Понимаешь, Руслан? Uh, 
два аккорда сыграть громче, а потом все тихо важно. Наоборот, наоборот, наоборот. Там написано крещендо, то есть все громче и громче. Я говорю, что когда мы видим слово крещендо, прямо вот на, на, в этих пассажах, которые в этими интервалами интересными, дуадецами. Can I make a quick suggestion uh, just about microphone volumes? Um, Oleg and Marco are very loud compared to the student, and I would love to turn the student's volume up, but if I do, it means that your speaking is, is much too loud. So if Marco and Oleg could just turn down a little bit, then I can turn the volume up and hear the student better. Let's see if it's possible. To... I don't think I can do, do anything with that, with this equipment that I have with me. It's cool, but... Um... I can I can turn the... How about this, uh, John? This is better? Yes, yeah. Okay. You're much quieter now, and then I can turn the vo overall volume up. Well, but you will hear a lot of Marco. <laughs> well, um, I'll live with it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, very nice. Uh, so let's just go to to the. Okay, but Marco, sorry, I, I, I didn't have a chance to explain. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you, okay. So, когда мы, музыканты, видим слово крещендо, вот тут вот можно рассмотреть слово крещендо. Я не знаю, у тебя в современном издании есть крещендо или нет? Есть, да? Когда крещендо, мы, музыканты, всегда понимаем, говорит Марко, что надо играть громко. А на самом деле это должно означать наоборот. Надо начать очень тихо и сделать громче, громче, громче. Потому что крещендо это не значит играть громко, это значит играть усиливая громкость, то есть начать надо обязательно тихо, потому что гитара это не труба и не саксофон, у нас очень ограниченный динамический опазон, все, все либо тихо, либо очень тихо, поэтому надо начать крещендо очень тихо. Вот можешь так сделать разок? Ну лучше, да. Окей, Марков, please continue, sorry. Uh, yes, you can now just continue playing this. C, C major scale. Okay, F nice, very nice. So here I have a suggestion that you can think of this part as there are two guitars that play. Uh, one can play like and the second one play so so we will make kind of a duet in your head uh, from this part so понимаешь uh, Руслан Uh -huh. yeah. Uh, yeah, so very often in secret music, all those passages, they just look the same, uh, 16 notes, and people uh, sometimes tend to play them very uh, me mechanically. And, uh, uh, and But if you analyze the structure of, of the melody, uh, and you can find very nice phrases, like in Bach's music in Chacon, You have thumb, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, and then uh, you have those long slurs in, in Bach's violin music, for instance. But translated to guitar, it's exactly like this. You know, it should be played. All those passages, Sikhra's uh, way. So uh, this is uh, kind of similar with some of Bach's music when we find this. Uh, Uh, how you call it, polyphony, uh, latent, latent polyphony, or uh, im implicit, yeah. implicit, implied, implied. So, Марко говорит, что вот когда эти у всех очень часто встречаются такие пассажи с шестнадцатыми нотами, и что большой соблазн играть их очень механистически, и что вот надо его избежать и стараться выявить полифонию, которая там запрятана. Вот часто эта полифония заключается в том, что как бы две гитары. Yes, and uh, connected to phrasing, then we can do like this. So we make 
So we have some part which is contrapart, which is only like talking, not not having a uh, beautiful melody. It's only a kind of um, rhetoric uh, uh, thing. This is it's not very interesting melodically. Uh, so melody is. Uh, so it, it, it's it's only my idea, you know, to 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 try to find those hidden melo uh, melodies and, uh, and 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 think as it as uh, some nice bel canto uh, melody and not like uh, some scales. Where you have to rush and show что, это не просто, что это не просто какие-то гаммы, а что найти там какие-то красивые певческие мелодии, как будто красивый оперный певец поет, как Марко только что нам спел. Ну попробуй. I think you should try the whole first variation with, the, you know, with the new ideas. Сыграй всю первую вариацию, Руслан. Чуть-чуть помедленнее, но стараясь. Oh, this was great. This was this was much uh, much better, and uh, and one uh, good thing for practicing is when you have metronome on, like one, two, three, four, then you can uh, kind of practice to go out from uh, from metronome and kind of come back again to the, to, to the beat. So it's important that in total you uh, respect the time uh, so you can do uh, it's difficult uh, for me to to, sh to demonstrate it i should maybe have metronome on and to show you how i uh, purposely uh, go out from being with metronome and then compensate it in the end of, of, of the bar uh, so that I come to the one in the next bar on time. It's very difficult, but, uh, but you, can, you can try to, to, to play with a lot of ag agogics, uh, but in the same time respect the, the, the time. Ты понял, да, что он сказал? Или в него возвращаться, да, молодец. Если бы стриг, то где-то быстрее. Так, I think we have like three more minutes probably. Oh, okay. Let, let, let's just go uh, further. Uh, variation number two. Okay, okay. Uh, I can stop you because we don't have so 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 much time. I have also compared those two editions, and I see that in the edition that you play, you have uh, those triplets. So always articulated three plus three plus three. Uh, but actually, uh, Sikra intentionally breaks this uh, pa pattern. So you don't have this kind of boring tear 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 but you have so tear 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 if you understand instead of tear 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 so tear 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 so he's kind of uh, playing a little bit with 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 those uh, accents And then you have this slur. Could you could you try to do uh, to play the bass the bass note uh, together with 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 slur? Uh, 
Uh huh. Have you have you ever uh, tried something like that before? Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, but you don't pluck. You don't pluck with with the right hand. Only only with the left hand here to get together with the bass here. Yes, very well. <laughs> Good job. So uh, after this, th then you have. Already, already, uh, it's not in your music. It's it's written differently in your in your edition, but. In your edition, it is like this. Oh, oh, but Sikra's way was. Oh, brilliantly. This was uh, really brilliant. So. Uh, Hello to Stefan and his daughter. So sweet. Uh, okay, uh, Ruslan, and, this and... was this was fantastic, really. So I suggest you that you, uh, although it is different, difficult, difficult to read from those old uh, music and old editions. I would really like to see you study all those. Uh, slurs and articulations that are written by Sikra uh, because I see that you are able of doing it with no problem. Uh, so, so it would be just even even much much better. You already played like like a big virtuoso. Uh, but but this would really add something to to, to, to music. Я, я, я как бы не то что переведу, а скорее перефразирую. То есть тебе удается сыграть очень быстро и четко, и это и в этом как бы эффект. Но можно достичь более, более глубокого эффекта, если соблюдать все нюансы, которые описаны у Сихры. А, как бы все эти лиги и так далее. Я с трудом себе могу представить, что ты будешь этим заниматься, но твой учитель Евгений Аксенов э, как раз обладает большим талантом э, э, и вниманием к деталям, так что я думаю, что он с, с тобой над этим поработает. Окей, okay, we need to move on. I just want to quickly make a summary. Thank you so much, Roslan, for playing. Uh, I just want to make a quick uh, summary uh, about the song. Uh, I mean, it's a song that starts on a D7 chord which is kind of unusual for the Russian songs, you know, like usually songs start on the tonic and like to start on the, on the seventh chord, yeah, that, 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 it's kind of unusual. So I think this is actually a gypsy song or Romani song, which means that it was originally a Russian folk song, but it was adopted by the Roma. And that's how Sikhra is thinking about that. And those legatos, that's what he, um, that's what he considered the Romani style. That that's known fact that he can, he didn't like too much legato and he called it Tsiganshina. So so something to think about. All right, Jonathan, we are ready for you. Hi. Hi hi. Can you see me? Um, no, no, we see I the can, darkness. We, we can hear you, but yeah. we cannot. Yeah. We see the darkness. Check your camera, Jonathan. Um, I So, Jonathan, either either you need to turn on your camera and turn it off again, or you can leave the meeting and rejoin us. But I mean, you you have to be seen. Die. 
Ai, é só amanhã então já tirei, tá ligado? Do we have another device? Of course, we have a, an option to listen to the recording again, <laughs> but it doesn't sound. I mean, like the, for for once, we can do something in in real time. Are you still there, Jonathan? Jonathan? Now we can't we no, can't we can. uh, hear you. That's strange. Okay, he he left. Okay. He he will probably start to rejoin. Sounds good. Do you have time, Marco? Is it okay that we'll go over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. If we ever solve this problem, but I hope we will. I mean, actually, you know, he was a little earlier. We should have checked the sound, but I kind of assume that as a European, he will <laughs> he will be on top of technology. I mean, yes, yeah, Swedish people are usually good in in technology. Look, look at Stefan. Already his daughter probably can do it. Yeah, his daughter can do it. But yeah, Morton, it's Morton's cool. <laughs> Morton, Morton is special. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jonathan, Jonathan, come to us. So anyway, uh, did you hear the, did you watch the concert from last night? Yes. Lots of talent. That's very, very good. Amazing, amazing woman from Kazan who plays Tchaikovsky. <laughs> <laughs> Very special talent. <laughs> I mean, not everybody. I, can... I have to, I, I have to send you a video of a Norwegian guitar quartet playing Stravinsky. Uh, it's quite good. Okay. John, Jonathan, Jonathan, you still look pretty dark. Yeah, it will be interesting. Uh, well, maybe we can continue with Ruslan uh, for uh, for. Uh, yeah, I mean, we should. Okay, let's. let's I mean, we can it. we can just uh, go through the whole piece. We haven't done the whole piece. Uh, I have some more points, and maybe Jonathan uh, fixes the problem in in the meantime. Meanwhile, I have time. We can do it a little bit longer, no problem. But let's just uh, finish with Ru Ruslan until uh, Jonathan. Okay, Jonathan. So if you hear me, uh, we are uh, basically as soon as you connected with video, we will, uh, you know. It will be the end of Ruslan's time, but I mean, <laughs> Ruslan's lesson rather. Uh, but um, uh, like uh, my advice is try another device, you know, go to a phone or iPad or computer or whatever, whatever you haven't tried yet. Okay, Ruslan, we are back. Variatia uh, третья. Okay, is it Yuna, Yonatan? One plus plus north, yeah, it must be. Yes, okay. Okay, then 
then we we continue with uh, thank you Ruslan. <laughs> That was the way to, to connect Jonathan. So now the question is, uh, can you unmute yourself? Uh, yes. Oh, yes, now. <laughs> yeah, hey, great. Uh, OK, do you manage? Uh, could you have a camera kind of a little bit higher? It's, it's a little bit too, too low. Uh, yeah and if you move a little bit so that we can uh, see all the to your right yeah also jonathan could you play a couple of yeah i think you don't have original sound no i'm on my phone it's okay yeah okay which uh, which piece by uh, by Vysotsky are you going to play uh, the prelude. Uh, well, I, I just got this music, uh, so I didn't have a chance to kind of look at it. And uh, so my advice is are not going to be uh, probably as useful as <laughs> the ones I could give to Ruslan, because uh, Ruslan piece I studied the day before. before. But this is a little bit new. Uh, the, the first thing that I noticed, I mean, this sounds almost like, uh, you know, Ingvi Malmsteen of, of 19th century. It's quite uh, virtuosic. And, uh, and I could imagine it, it, this would probably sound great on electric guitar with seven strings, probably. So you could make it very interesting. Uh, Okay, I see that the tempo is andante, uh, which is kind of not too fast. Um, uh, so I think you, you, you should try a little bit more moderate tempo um, so that it's, it is also easier for me to, <laughs> to, to, to understand what's going, what's going on in the music. Uh, could you try one more time, a little bit slower? Okay, okay. Uh, uh, could, could you do it one more time in the way you did it uh, first time? What, what was your uh, your uh, in your tempo? Okay, nice. Uh, one thing which is very important is that, uh, you know, in the music generally, there is a hierarchy between the beats. Uh, so all the off beats should be played a little bit uh, softer. So uh, one and two and 
one and two and one. So and then, then we get this andante, this go, going uh, uh, tempo. One and two and uh, and and also you can um, think a little bit of it. Which chords you can break and uh, which which one you shouldn't break. I think I don't think you should break all of them. It, it's, it, it's a little bit too much. Uh, I think uh, if you break the first one, uh, then you don't need to break the, the, the second bit. And, and it is uh, if you play while I'm talking, it doesn't work on Zoom uh, like that. So we have to, uh, yeah. Uh, so I, I, I will tell you when when uh, when to try. So uh, could you try only to break, for for instance, the first one, but not the second one, and also try to play softer. This one and two and. You're playing something a little bit differently from what, what is written in the music that I have. Could you just play the last last two bars, please? You're playing some extra notes or? Uh, from what is written. And then. Okay. Yeah, he ends uh, in B minor, but with the D in in the bass. Uh, also, okay. Could you, could you could you play one more time? Last two bars, please. Okay. I, 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 now I, uh, I, I, see, I hear, I hear some kind of glissando uh, between uh, between E and E sharp. Uh, it, it, it's maybe because of fingerings. Uh, you shouldn't do. What is the fingering you are you are using there? The first one. You you do with the bar, yeah, oh, and then okay. I'm just trying to. Figure out. I, 
I heard, uh, yeah, you do something like this. You, ham you hammer, you hammer uh, unintentionally this, this uh, E sharp. So it sounds like uh, there are some extra 16 notes uh, between. So I was just wondering if there is some kind of anticipation of this note, but that's probably a technic technical problem. Uh, you should try to... Nah. Okay, one important thing is that to avoid uh, this kind of unwanted noises between uh, two chords, it's, it is very important to to prepare uh, to prepare the right hand before you leave uh, this chord. So so you go play, stop, play, and when you stop when you stop the strings like this, then you you can almost do anything here without it being audible. Uh, so it is important to timing, yes. Timing is very important be between two hands. So this one needs to go first and to get ready for the next chord. And in the same time, you kind of, uh, yeah, erase those, uh, those, those noises. Uh, okay. But uh, otherwise, very, very well played. I like uh, this very impro impro improvisation kind of uh, feeling that uh, that I have when when I'm listening to you. So that that's very nice. So you should really keep keep on that kind of feeling uh, in in this music. Uh, so as I said, I haven't had the opportunity to. To, to look at it and go in details. So, um, so this is this was only what I noticed uh, right now. Uh, we can we can, we can uh, you know so, so that's the approach like uh, kind of little detail here, little there. We can go to his other piece. Yeah, yeah. Maybe and, we can go. Before to that, the... I can I can just ask a question, maybe a comment on on this. You know, I was just looking at this ending. Yeah. And I mean, just uh, one should realize that in dealing with Wysotsky, you know, it happens sometimes that you need to help the composer a little bit. So, I mean, that's kind of our decision. You know, what you have is a contrary motion, like the upper voice goes. And the bottom voice goes. So together it is. And, uh, and this E that he adds in on the last chord, where is it? This one kind of obscures this contrary motion. So I mean, there is a possibility of not playing. Anyway, just a couple. Let's move to the song. Oh, it hurts. Uh, yeah, I I I see your point, Oleg. But but I think he did it because because he wants this second accord, second accord, and then to resolve it in uh, in the third of the next. Uh, so he wanted to kind of finish uh, with the sixth accord with B minor with D, D in, in bass. So that's that's why he put. He put this septim in the bass. Um, okay, so the, the other piece is Oh, Bolitia, Sto Bolitia. Okay, 
you can play? suggest that we just you know try one section and then we'll, we will see how uh, how much we uh, we will manage uh, okay very nice uh, you here you can play you can try to play very legato very smooth very singing and then uh, this was a discovery of Oleg and me you know we were talking about Vysotsky's uh harmonics and and we found out actually that this harmonics probably shouldn't be played here uh probably it's only Vysotsky who uh who notated actually the pitch you should we should hear and not the placement of the finger so his, his notation is actually so uh, the melody goes like this so uh, so you need to play actually this uh, harmonic on the seventh string in order to get the right octave uh, so yeah. Yeah. Could, could you try from the beginning and try to to implement those those new, new this new idea? Yeah. Okay, uh, okay, and, and uh, generally, uh, this is, you know, we have quarter notes, pam, pam, pam. So how to make, how, how to connect those notes when they are, you know, it, it's going quite slowly from one to the next note, you know? Uh, so what we need to do is, uh, while we are playing this one, we need to sing in our head already the next one. So we shouldn't be static. We shouldn't be like uh, listening to this one and then and then listen to the next one and then listen to the next one. So we kind of need to connect them in a, in a smooth melody. So mentally we have to be ahead always and uh, try to like that, that's the way singers also think they they think about the placement of the next note kind of in their body before they make sound so we kind of have to do the same we have to 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 imagine the placement of of the of the next chord before playing it. Uh, so could you try like so okay uh, so and, and then so th this is the end of the phrase and 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 the note is actually the lowest one in the phrase so that that uh, that note shouldn't be played very loudly you know you should play yeah so so try to be very um, careful with this one so you have to Very nice, very nice. OK, 
Okay, how do you play those uh, ornaments? Okay, so, yeah, yeah, that, that's better. I wouldn't pluck this one. It's unnecessary. It's unnecessary. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, this second time is okay. So here, the way it was played, this ornament. Uh, was supposed to be played on two strings, like cross string trill. You can even do it with with uh, with one finger. Uh, so I would do this. So this is this is correct the way you do uh, uh, this. Uh, this slur can can mean glissando. That's uh, very good. So you can do it like. Yes, and 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 you know when we do a, a, such such kind of cross string trills, uh, it's sometimes very important to actually stop uh, the first string of sounding. Otherwise, we get like this uh, very sharp interval, this second. Uh, so I think, uh, yeah, on the higher level of playing, you know, you always want to do that to kind of cut those unwanted uh, resonances and, uh, and intervals. So. So we have already got the, the desired effect by playing on two strings and then and then we need to get rid of this uh, first note. So I like I like doing this kind of things with one finger and and then and then you can use M or uh, a finger or whatever to, to just stop stop the first string of uh, from so sounding. Uh, Yes. Very well, very well. So this is also one kind of situation where we where where we have this usage of kind of Apoyando technique. So apoyando was also used, you know, uh, for for doing things like this. Uh, okay, you can just play the ne next uh, variation. Okay, nice, very nice. Uh, sometimes when you have a quarter note uh, in the melody uh, and and eight notes in, in, in the bass line, sometimes you kind of drop uh, and you miss uh, the whole length of, uh, length of this uh, quarter note in, in, in the melody. So, could you try one more time and just to listen to the melody? Okay, 
okay. And then one very important thing is all those uh, uh, ornaments, you know, they, they shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't rush into them and they should be played on the beat. You know, that was the practice of, of that time, not only on, on Russian seven string guitar, but also generally. Uh, uh, so you should play like... That sounds a little bit like Clapton. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's also fine. But 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 in this case, it should be it, it, you know interpreted uh, as as two uh, sixteen notes, two sixteen notes on the beat, like. Tai, tai, ti, tai, tai, tai. Yes. Exactly. Uh, so you have much more clear uh, the way you did it it was like uh, it comes it comes always too early and um, and, and you know it, it, it sounds a little bit like you you, you suddenly gonna fall down <laughs> uh, Okay, uh, uh, and this 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 one, uh, when you go to the te uh, to the tenth fret, I I wouldn't I wouldn't pluck pluck the the this note. I think it's so romantic and nice to play. Uh, Yes. So uh, just you know, uh, and 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 you know, you know, you know this trick, uh, how to get this good vibrato. Uh, you actually place both fingers on the on the string. So. And you know, you you actually need this note on the ninth fret uh, right after this one. So it's kind of also practical to 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 have it uh, to to have it prepared. Uh, and also, vibrato gets much more secure and much more passion. There is much more passion in it. So if you have one finger, it's not uh, like the same. When you have two fingers on string, you know, it, it. I mean, it's the same like when you when you do bendings and, and stuff stuff like that uh, in the rock music. Uh, you, you never do it with one finger. Finger, you. you so fingers kind of all, always support uh, support each other. So here also. So don't don't pluck. Yeah, don't pluck it. But do kind of ah, bubble style with rock. But remember to to put to put uh, the first uh, finger on the string uh, as soon as possible. Poss possible if you play, I mean. 
probably they played, you know, this A in bass. Probably it was played with thumb. And then you could, uh, you could have those fingers, you know, already ready uh, uh, to... So... Oh, you guys sound almost like a theremin. Uh, can I say something, uh, Marco? Uh, I mean, basically, we are uh, getting to the end of uh, the uh, allowed time because in 40, 48 minutes we already have a concert. But I just uh, really would like to uh, hear Marco on on the next bar <laughs> because I mean, th when Jonathan played, uh, I mean, everything was really beautiful, dramatic. I mean, I'm talking about the concert. Everything was. Uh, very, very much in the style of the Russian guitar. And then there was a moment which reminded me that another famous Scandinavian uh, musician, uh, uh, Leif Christensen, he recorded Sarenka, but on one, one piece was somehow not in a very good edition and it missed slurs. And so it was in 30 second notes and he played all of them articulated. Tuck, 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 tuck. Assuming that that's what, because he never really learned uh, much repertoire, he only, only looked at Sarenka obsessively. But mm. I mean, like, uh, when you play, you articulate uh, in the second uh, part of the uh, of the bar, you articulate every note there, and that's completely uh, out of the question. I mean, like in sixteenth notes, like Vysotsky just doesn't do that ever. So it has to be a combination of harp effects. And, uh, yeah. I I think I think you should try you should try you should try this uh, uh, like. Uh, oh yeah. Here. So, and then and then you use this time while while playing the the open first string D to change to change position, but the first finger can kind of keep keep the contact keep contact with the second. That's very important to, to keep the finger on the string as a reference a reference finger. So like this. And here, here we have the same situation as I showed to Ruslan, uh, that we play the bass note at the same time as, as we hammer on here. Uh, so, so yeah, th th that would be my uh, solution. And it immediately sounds like Russian guitar. It immediately have this harp-like, you know, really connected sound. Which I mean, I mean, some part of it is that one has to learn to listen like that. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that the Spanish guitarists, when they hear us, they think that we are not articulating. You know, that it's some kind of goo. You know, that where is instead of I mean, that's that's very interesting. Okay, this is this is all time we have, uh, Marco. Uh, great thanks from on behalf of Yar. The check is in the mail, so to speak. <laughs> um, uh, Jonathan and uh, Ruslan, excellent job. Uh, every, everybody is great. Um, thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me. And uh, thank, thank you all the students for showing their uh, interest in, in, in this beautiful repertoire. Uh, very well done. Good job. So just the Thanks. last, the, the last uh, favor, you know, like since you know where the concert is going to happen in uh, 44 minutes, just invite all of your friends and family, you know, the whole country of Sweden, the whole uh, country of Tatarstan, you know, don't be shy. Thank you so much.